uh, it says five o'clock on this one. It says 5.02 on the clock behind me. Is Welcome Peter guests. Peter's not here? Peter no. Peter is caught in Colorado. Peter is not going to call in. His flight's been delayed. A oh, bit. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. that she is uh, running late. Yep. Mm -hmm. gotcha. uh, we have, a, um, are there any amendments to the agenda? Um, the only amendment to the agenda is to consider whether to hold a select board meeting right before town meeting on the 3rd. Okay, so that will be any other business to come before the board? We probably have to vote on that. Okay. So we uh, do you know all the do you know all the selectmen here? If not, the two of them will introduce themselves, <laughs> and we are getting another one who's coming in once delayed at the airport in Denver. Phil Hayek, Hi. Steve Martin, and this is Dorinda Curls. I'm the treasurer. Okay, so if you want to introduce yourself for um, the record keeper there, our town clerk and administrator, that would be great. And our first item on the agenda is Ben. Rose, uh, Recovery and Mitigation Chief, Section Chief of Vermont Emergency Management. Hey, how long have you done that, Ben? Uh, since Irene. Oh my that God. Program. Sue Minter asked so me you to help. Came, you came with Sue Minter? She asked me Minter. to help, and I jumped in about five months after Irene. Great. And she dropped me into FEMA world, and my hair was on fire for two years. <laughs> and you haven't come up yet. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so if you want to, um, and do you want to introduce your, both of yourselves for the record and what sure. you do? I'm Jennifer Evans, 28 Rich Road. I'm the owner of the property that I'm Is under looking discussion. to buy out. Yeah. yeah, and? I'm Tracy Collier. I was the head of the Disaster Case Management Program right after Irene. It's now no longer there, but I can speak But to she's that. still my case manager. <laughs> okay. You're heavily involved in this issue. <laughs> yes. Tracy, do you work for the Vermont Department, or are you? I currently do work for the state of Vermont, but previous, when I was in the role of Disaster Case Management Director, it was for Capstone Community. Okay. Okay. Sorry. okay, Ben, if okay. you want to chat with so, us, yeah, thank you. you have the floor. Thank you all for your uh, service to the community. Thanks for taking the time for this. Um, so what we're going to talk about is a what's commonly called a buyout. Um, and this is uh, where FEMA, Federal Emergency Management Agency, provides 75% federal share of the cost of a project to buy out a, a residential property in this case, which is in a flood vulnerable location. And the theory, this is hazard mitigation, the theory is that it saves the federal, state, and local taxpayers money over time if people don't live in extremely dangerous places which require repetitive flood recovery. And um, this was a very big deal after Irene because um, the way this hazard mitigation funding pot works is that for every dollar of federal assistance, there's 15 cents made available to the state, the recipient of the grant, uh, to make hazard mitigation grants anywhere in the state. And so Irene, it was about a billion dollar hit on the state of Vermont, and more than half a billion came from different federal sources. Um, one big source was Federal Highway, the other big source was public assistance, which is grants to um, communities to repair their infrastructure, like local roads. And there was $210 million of public assistance. Uh, the state got about a third of that for the Waterbury Office Complex and other state buildings, too. Well, long story short, so 15 cents on the dollar means that there was $34.5 million available to the state to make hazard mitigation grants. And we're still spending down the last of that, but we used over 20 million of it to buy out people who've been badly flooded, in some cases who have lost everything in Irene. And most people in Vermont don't have flood insurance. So um, this was a, a good humanitarian mission, and it also bought down the risk in a lot of communities. Um, and um, we've had about 10 smaller floods since Irene. Um, five of them, we've already closed out the grants. We're, we've got a lot better at managing disasters because of Irene. And, we learned a lot of lessons which we're trying to hang on to. Well, long story short, that just get, gets us to the starting line. Uh, for whatever reason, uh, this program, th this, this was not a buyout that people were ready to move on 
right after Irene, and I should stop and say that the way the program works is that the state makes a subgrant to the community, and it is entirely voluntary on the community as the subrecipient and on an individual landowner whether to participate in this program. And in this case, the stars are aligned that we have a willing community, I hope, and a willing landowner who said, enough, I don't want to live in a dangerous place anymore. And uh, in one of the uh, subsequent disasters, DR 4330, which was, uh, I believe, the storm of June and July 2013, uh, one of the applications that was submitted was uh, to buy out 28 Rich Road. Uh, and we submitted that to Town of Middlesex? You did indeed. I have the application right here. Just a reminder. Um, this is the application that was submitted, and it was signed uh, by, I don't know who, whoever that is. <laughs> Peter Hood. You couldn't read that? <laughs> okay. That's so, what's here. <laughs> so that got you, one would think, to the starting line. But FEMA has a lot of rules, but they move very slowly. And um, there's a lot of hoops to jump through, and we have now jumped through a bunch of them, including a site inspection visit and uh, FEMA asking lots of questions. And there's a new requirement, which FEMA has added since Irene, which I think FEMA came to this honestly. It's, it's a requirement that the, uh, both the recipient, the state, and the subrecipient, the town, sign a recapitulation of the terms and conditions of the grant. So what I have for your consideration is this eight-page document, and there are copies right there, and I have some extras so I can share them. I also emailed those to you last week. This is the thing that was emailed. You're going to ask me difficult technical questions about this. I know well, I didn't probably... read this because I couldn't bring that up when well, I Well, if you have difficult technical <laughs> questions, I'm probably going to say, I don't know, but I will get you an answer. I should tell you that I am not a subject matter expert practitioner of hazard mitigation grants. I'm the state recovery and mitigation section chief, which means I've had three hazard, hazard mitigation officers work for me, but I've never actually been in the weeds of doing projects until our very good hazard mitigation officer, Laura Nowitz, left for the Nature Conservancy a few months ago, and I've been trying to keep things moving forward. But just last week, we hired a very good new state hazard mitigation officer named Stephanie Smith, and Stephanie already knows a lot more about the programmatic details and guidance than I do. So I don't want to say anything that's going to be wrong. But um, the good news is that there's nothing in this document that is materially different from what you already, what the rules were when you applied for the grant. What, what FEMA discovered, I said they came by this honestly, what they discovered is that there's misunderstandings later in the process because people didn't understand what they'd signed up for. And so they're getting people to sign saying, yes, we understand all the rules of the game. Things like, we know that we need to provide a clean title. We know that we can't redevelop the property once. We know. We, well, I mean, the, I was town. Just like we looking, the town, we the state. I was just looking at the title search, and we, yeah. we the town do know that we have outstanding obligations on that property owed to the town. Isn't that right, Dorian? No. no. No taxes are owed? Not on that one. Oh, okay, sorry. But you can't yeah, turn around and resell it to a developer, for example, because the reason the federal government is investing in this buyout is so that it will remain an open plot of land. You're basically giving it back to the Nooski River, which really wants to be there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can you just tell me, Ben, will we own it? Yes, the, the town. town will own it. Um, the, the Vermont Housing Conservation Board, here's some other good news, and we didn't know this until even when I got on the agenda. We weren't sure about this, but now we this know. This is Liz Sharp, our, our yes. fourth member of the state hey. board. This is Ben um, Rose and others, about 28, 38, Rich Road. Yes. Hello. I know these people. <laughs> yes, Liz Sharp. So we're talking about the terms and conditions for a hazard mitigation grant to buy out from the average okay. road. And you have one more copy of that. Uh, I have a few copies, yeah. Here's the agenda. And oh, okay. okay. This is what we're discussing when we were on kind of like, I was on page three of eight. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I, w I wanted to talk about the funding, because that's yeah. usually where the real pain is. 
Um, it's a federal, 75% federal share of the total project cost. And the elements of total project cost are the appraised value pre-disaster, if it's been flooded. But you basically, the town hires an appraiser, that's a cost. The, the appraiser says, okay, the fair market value of the property is X thousand uh, dollars. If the property owner and the, doesn't agree to that, then there's a mechanism for the for a second appraisal and you get into all kinds of back and forth. But um, but usually the appraisal comes in somewhere in the in the neighborhood of what what it's on the tax rolls for um, plus or minus. Um, so but we can't percent. use a, any uh, either of our town listers or what we have on our record. For the uh, no, you have, to, have to you hire. have to hire and an it's, appraiser. It's after or pre or post? Well, in this case, it would be it, it's, it would be right now because it hasn't been you know, gutted by a disaster recently. Post disaster, yeah. post -disaster mm -hmm. right? Um, then there is um, um, uh, a. Um, clean, well, you, then you have to hire a, the town um, does a title search, ascertains that the title is clear, okay, that's another small cost. Uh, then the town uh, schedules a closing, mm -hmm. okay, uh, and... Um, that's another cost. The okay, there's a closing cost, right. All, 75% of all of that is eligible. Um, the FEMA cuts a check, the state makes the check available so the town is able to, at the closing, buy the property from the property owner. Mm -hmm. You walk away, okay? The town now has to hire, procure somebody to demolish the site and bring it back to clear ground and cap the utilities and whatever else needs to be done. Um, and. Um, and then take a picture of it every three years, and it's a green field. And that's pretty much the end of the story. Except, where does the town come up with that extra money, and how does the property owner afford to walk away for 75% of the appraised value? That's an answer that we don't have for all projects. Um, but we had it for the properties we bought after Irene, because we, the, the state also got a community development block grant, two of them actually, for $40 million. And we were able to use the CDBG money as the non-federal match. And as that was running out, the Vermont Housing Conservation Board stepped in with a small appropriate, a small allocation that we could use to finish out the remainder of the buyouts. And we were running out of that money, and we didn't know where the match was going to come from anymore. And then a property in another community dropped out. It's kind of a sad story, but it's Middlesex's and Jennifer's good fortune, I believe, because um, there is just enough money left in the last VHCB allocation to cover the non-federal match, mm. both for the town and for the homeowner. So when the dust settles, um, other than carrying costs for a little while, there shouldn't be any cost to mm. the town, and you should be able to walk away with the mm -hmm. fair value and not get into the difficult situation where your buyout offer is 75% of appraised value minus the town's cut share of the of the demolition cost and so forth. It's it's tough to ask someone to walk away for you know 63% of their market value or whatever. Especially since it won't be as high as it would have been before the flood. Well, you know, again, it's an appraisal, um, and um, there are times when during the demolition uh, you encounter unanticipated asbestos or some other um, unanticipated expense. It is possible to amend the grant. I mean, if the appraisal comes in $10,000 higher than what we put in the budget, that's what, if, we don't even need to do a lot of paperwork with FEMA unless the overall cost changes by 10% or more. If it comes in under the budget or on the budget, it's pretty much smooth sailing on the other end. Um, I, I don't really want to go through all, eight, all pages of all eight pages of legal gobbledygook with you, but if you have specific questions, either about the program or about the language, ask away. 
Ben, do you mind if I ask a question? Please. Well, as from my experience from administering the last grant, we had we submitted bids for asbestos consult consultation. And I forget exactly how much that was, but there was a little bit of asbestos. There was asbestos in a kitchen sink, and there was a little bit of asbestos on one of the roofs of the two trailers. It was not a big deal. We then submitted uh, RFPs for asbestos removal, and two of them came in at over $40,000. Oh. Wow. One of them came in at $20,000. I'm not sure the person that's the one the sled board chose. I'm not sure that the job he did was probably the greatest job because I then was yelled at by the engine by the state engineer who insisted that I report in the land records that he did not follow the exact procedures for the, I, I think I don't know anything about asbestos removal I hired a contractor going back to that considering that we were just looking at a, a sink and a little bit of asbestos on a roof of a mobile home chances are Jennifer's house I think considering its date probably right. has asbestos That's what don't I think, think. I mean, that's a I think there may be some insulation in the attic yeah, that has right. asbestos. Yes. So now we're looking at if her house is like one hundred and twenty thousand dollars. Do you know what your house is valued at, Jennifer? It's like one hundred and thirteen or something. Yeah, right. Like that. So now we got a forty thousand dollar. This was you know seven years ago. Forty thousand dollars asbestos removal at the minimum. What do we do? How much does the town get back then? Um, we will put in a cost. That's changed uh, a scope change cost overrun request to FEMA if that happens. If it happens. We have a little room to work with because um, it's in the special the map special flood hazard area, mm -hmm. and FEMA has a policy which is called the BCA waiver, the benefit cost analysis waiver, for buyouts that are under two hundred and seventy six thousand dollars total cost. FEMA does not require a benefit cost analysis for anything that's in the map special flood hazard area, mm -hmm. and that's because it was just. They, they found that those buyouts are cost effective. And so because we're not pushing up against that limit, mm -hmm. there's nothing that's going to trigger a red light to go off with FEMA. Mm -hmm. And it is what it is. If, if you end up having to spend a little more on, you know, proper demolition and disposal, then we'll put that in as a, a cost overrun. Do we get the estimates and then we ask for the, the waiver or the additional amendment? We'll, we'll you'll write Sarah will write me a letter saying we got bids and it turns out we have this unanticipated forty thousand dollar cost overrun. It is. And I'll send it to FEMA and we'll tell our sad story <laughs> and then they'll delay for an infuriating couple months and eventually it'll be granted. Hopefully it doesn't rain for four days and time. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's it's a slow process and I don't control FEMA's time frame and I apologize in advance for the bureaucratic grind of this process for all parties concerned, but it's a good outcome in the end, and it's actually a, a pretty good program. I might have missed something um, in the so the seventy five the twenty five percent match. Um, so if the cost goes up because of this, the match then would go up as well. Um, we have enough. You have budget. enough for that. Have to, enough. BHCB that has enough to, for okay. Okay. It, Well, it's actually BHCB money. Oh. Yeah. And we're hoping there'll be. Well, I, mean, I don't think I'm allowed to say this. I work for the governor, but um, but there are people. Well, who this would, is Gus, right? Sorry, Gus Selig. Well, well, there are people who would like to see it, the VHCB appropriation go up. If it does, there are people who would like to see a piece of that go to keeping the buyout program going because it leverages these federal dollars. But that's above my pay grade. Yeah. But in the short term. Uh, yeah, I don't think I, I think there's about fifty thousand dollars available, up to about up fifty thousand dollars, should the town and Have property owner need it for the non-federal share. And please don't ask me about the transaction sequence for that. I know you I get won't. the money. I don't know who gives a check to who. <laughs> we're or, we're, or used, to, we're used to paying out. And but now about is later. vermiculite uh, considered like? asbestos and something that would be beyond or is that normal in the process of demolishing because vermiculite is one of those things that has you know asbestos yeah. in it and or is that just a part of the like that's an assumption that all houses have ver vermiculite in them of, of a certain age i don't know you don't know okay because i'm sure that that's what that's the, but that's where my that's the yes. part yeah, that's what you're talking the about, what I'm talking about. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah i mean my house has it i mean I ask another question uh, in in the audit yes, of our I'm oh, sorry, Mary. Um, in the audit of the last buyout we did, 
uh, FEMA recommended that the board pass certain policies regarding uh, contracts, bids, you, you know, to make sure that those policies were in place before we proceed, went down this road. Does that sound familiar to you? Is there anything in dealing with small towns that you make sure that there are certain policies we have in place yep. before we? Yeah, unfortunately, I know a lot about this. <laughs> okay, um, so tell us what we need. You, the good news is you probably are going to, well, I don't know if it's good news or bad news. Basically, in order for the state as the recipient to make a subgrant to the town as a subrecipient, we have to follow the state rules for making a grant, which have been through the state auditor and everything. So my employer, the Department of Public Safety, is going to be making a grant to the town. Before the deep, deep Department of Public Safety makes a grant, they require the town to have a conflict of interest policy, a procurement policy. You probably have all these things. Vermont League of Cities and Towns has templates and I mean basically you've if you've ever gotten a grant from the Department of Public Safety for anything, you've checked all these boxes and you'll have to fill out a little questionnaire in the same I don't know if it's calendar or fiscal year to assess whether the town of Middlesex is a high risk applicant or not, but it, it's it's pretty routine stuff and you know, basically follow your own town's procurement policy, which is you don't just call your brother-in-law to do an appraisal, right. you call three, and if only one responds and you deem it cost reasonable, then you put a note in the file saying we RFP'd for three and only one responded and we think it's cost reasonable, love town of Middlesex, and that'll let the FEMA person check the box. Is yes. that, Sarah, we did that for the last two, didn't we, the other trailers? So. To be clear, we did do, uh, we did send out our RFPs, we had closed bids, we opened them up, we went through the bids, I did an analysis explaining why we did the lowest and best bid that we felt, you know, we chose. It was quite a learning experience. Hmm. I'm a little worried about our procurement policy, I think I brought it to the select board earlier, and there is really no, for towns of this size, Ben, there, you know, unless you're dealing with these big grants, there is no requirement that you send out bids for everything. Um, it's in the state statutes. So we're going to have to bone up. That's why I'm asking now, because if this is coming down the pipe, we should have all that paperwork in line. Yep, and uh, in a way, the process keeps, you're right, but the process keeps you out of trouble because we're not going to be able to actually do this until you have the subgrant and... Melissa, our very good finance person, won't issue that subgrant. Yeah, we'll, that. we'll send it to the commissioner for signature until you've signed it and she's determined that you've checked all her boxes, which the auditor her requires her to check. So, which means all these policies. Well, the, the, You're yeah, gonna have the issue, to have it the all issue there. for the board is going to be that once you pass that procurement policy, you got to follow it for everyone. You got to follow it for sand. You got to follow it for trucks. You got to follow it for. I mean, it's. it's why can't we? Why can't we exempt it? A certain yeah. things. So it's going to change the I, way you do business. I recommend looking at the Vermont League of Cities and Towns policy, and most towns have a have a like a small purchase threshold, I think, of ten thousand dollars. <throat> Look, if you're buying something for more than ten thousand dollars, you probably want to procure it competitively, right? Um, you're probably doing. I mean, you're you're good stewards of the people's mm -hmm. money. It just the the policy just tells the state how you do that, and it's pretty painless. And you're right. It's a good opportunity to get that in place. The other one you'll need to check Melissa's box is a conflict of interest policy, which, again, I'm sure you're following, and it's a good thing to have it in the books. I don't think we have a policy, a written policy on that either. I think it's in our personnel policy, but that may not be good enough for the state. Mm -hmm. Well, Melissa will help you if you... If like she said, they got you have templates for all of that. Yeah. It can be done. And it, it, it puts a little work. But you know how much time we can spend yeah. on you templates. See the, see the two gigantic binders <laughs> I've got there just for 190 and 191 three mile bridge But there is also, I think, uh, up to. I, I don't oh know no no no! I'm to... not charging time. I'm not doing that. You again. can take a little management. Cost money. You can do that. May, may I speak, Mary? Uh, yes. <laughs> the problem was that FEMA wanted me to work on this project overtime that I was not allowed to work during office hours. So if I was going to do anything for FEMA, I had to do it after hours. The city of Barrie paid back $63,000 because they did not do it correctly. We had to pay back 252. So I've been down that road. Uh, we'll talk offline about okay. that. I'm not sure we get, <laughs> all right, yeah. Wow. 
And we sure we want to do this, huh? <laughs> That's why we're here. Yeah. Any other questions by any other members of the board about any of it? And so let me ask a question, Ben. Is the reason you called up to find out action unlikely and you wanted it action possible is because you want us to sign this tonight? Is that what I, you're saying? I cannot, we can't move forward without the town signing. It doesn't have to be tonight. Um, I'm not trying to rush you. It's been... It's been what four years, right? But but <laughs> but we just saw this but, ten minutes ago. <laughs> right. This is one of the steps we do control, and and Stephen wants us all as the recipient and subrecipient to acknowledge these terms and conditions, and then they will issue the award, and that gets us to the starting line. Now I should say that even once you've signed this and they've issued the award. If the town changes its mind or the homeowner changes its mind, you can pull the plug. I mean, until until the closing happens, there's no obligation to go forward. So I don't I don't think there's really risk to the town by signing this document at this time. But it keeps the possibility of success moving forward. Wow, well, we have to have a title show too. Well, what does the board think? I mean, do you feel comfortable uh, moving ahead on this? If we, I do. Most if the representation mm -hmm. is that it's substantially what we yeah. did when we in, indicated, uh, when we put the application in, mm -hmm. how many years ago? Four. Four. 23? Well, 2013. Oh, submitted in 2014, I guess. Oh, I, my nose said 13, but that was just... Mm -hmm. wow. now, the disasters have sort of all blended together for me now. In <laughs> January, 20 years ago. Yeah. Okay, well then I'll accept a motion. Um, and the motion should be to authorize the acting chair to enter into the terms and conditions set forth in uh, the FEMA document project number 4330-8R. Is that right? right? Terms and conditions. Yeah. Is that what you said, Phil? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyone else for a second? Liz? Liz? I'll second it. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 And those opposed? The chair votes yes. Okay. And so I'm the signature recipient? Yes. Did you just, yeah, I talked to Peter, yes. You are uh, the, no, uh, you're the su signature uh, sub recipient. Yeah, sub -recipient. Right I'm there. Recipient. So if you sign that, then I can make a copy for you, okay? Great. Questions. No, they're get everything questions. on the record before yeah, yeah. you go down. And there's, you know, there's always some bureaucratic kerfuffle with these, but we'll get through <laughs> it. Right yeah. now, it's, you know, having done it once. Today is the 18th? More. Yes. Mm -hmm. 18th, yeah. Okay. Do you just need the signature page? Sure. All right. Hey. Did you get a chance to say anything? Anything you want to add for the record? <laughs> No, not <laughs> <laughs> Off the record? <laughs> Thank you. It's, it's a lot of work, but she deserves yeah. it. It's hard to live somewhere where you don't feel safe. Yeah. yeah. Right. There is no like question about it. Sure. It's a beautiful yeah. spot, but it's yeah. not safe. I mean, it Thank is you. a beautiful place to live. I bike there all the time. I prefer not to have to carry two cats through icy water up to my hips again. Mm. No. Well, they were going to make it the Mary Skinner Memorial Park and put in a toilet right First, back. First, you have corner. to die. <laughs> we can add the memorial second. later. Let's not go there. <laughs> well, you call it the oh, memorial. It's a memorial. Oh, yeah, park. right. <laughs> <laughs> the bikers of the world would thank me, though. <laughs> Great. Thanks, thank man. You. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you very much. much. Carefully, the roads are not right. Oh, yeah, the roads are bad. I I didn't have, have any, any, I didn't have any trouble the except that when I go down the road, the, the, the paved road, there's a lot of bumps there. Oh, yeah. I can feel myself skidding yeah. if I don't get in the right groove. I was in Montpelier earlier today. It was just slush everywhere. Oh, yeah. like, but that's not the same as I see. Are you saying it's icy? No, it's just, I mean, I'm not in the right car. Somebody was saying there was a couple of cars off. I saw cars actually on Center Road. There were somebody 
had gone off yeah. like into a giant well, thank dish. Thank you, Ben. Yeah. 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 It's so yeah, there's well, my dad went off the road yesterday in his Subaru um, and because of the ruts. I get the checks out of the It threw him off the road. All I need wow. is just the checks, and you guys can look at the orders. You mean you're just assuming we're going to approve them all? I know you are. Yeah. <laughs> I got two out of three signatures already, so. Uh, wait a minute. Yeah, I okay, on, thanks. The Sorry I'm late, everyone. I know those things happen. I have to go into town because I, I was spent the day with my house yeah. cleaning up after family. But oh. how great is that? Yeah, right, right. Kids right. Can't complain. How was the hike? This is yours. The hike was great. Oh, great. And even though it was cold when it started, they said it was one of the clearest days. Yeah, it was a beautiful day. I've ever seen it in the that's high awesome. was 24. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so Sarah, you don't like to join us. You like to talk from afar. I can't help if my eight-year-old laptop cannot exist without being plugged in. But what? You don't like to get an extension cord? No. Well, they don't fly over here. I can look she just really she doesn't like this anymore. She really wants to create some distance. I know. I noticed that. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like we got paid I mean, today. I feel I did get paid. our annual paycheck. Whoa. I think she's but afraid But Mary's getting... questioning whether or not I can sign checks, you know? <laughs> I think she even look at this to know that she's getting paid no. tonight. <laughs> I'm I, afraid she I'm thinks she's going to get coronavirus from one of us. <laughs> that's, that's probably likely. Okay, so the next item on the agenda is discuss updating town rental policy to include waiver of liability and to clarify renter's obligation, raise snowmobile removal. This is the kind of thing that probably Peter would like to be here. But I just well, you could at least outline it because okay. it won't, we're not going to. Right. We're not going to act on it tonight, so we can discuss it twice, and it will be a lot okay. shorter when we discuss it than when Peter discusses it. So Go ahead. We had two Saturdays ago, we had a, a baby shower here, and it was the day after a big storm. And I got a text at 1.30 in the afternoon before the 2 o'clock baby shower, and unfortunately, the people who rented it were very nice. They rented this before. They were Middlesex residents. Um, but, you know, uh, the, the renter... Said it's 1:30. When is the road crew coming today to plow the plow town hall, plow the, the the parking lot? And I made clear to her that we do. I will not be shoveling the walks. We will not be sh doing the. We will not be plowing and all this. But she was she was under the impression that that this would happen. That was an issue. Um, the, it, she ended up getting somebody to come in and just ride all over the parking lot and mat down the snow. Because the road crew was asleep. They had been they had been plowing all night the night before. Then the toilets overflowed. The toilets always overflow this year. We have this problem where we rent town halls at this time of year because people need a space this time to, uh, this time of year. But we don't have we, this building Capacity. doesn't work. The uh, front steps are impossible, that the big ice dam forms out there so people can't get to the elevator, they can't get in. The, the, it's not up to the road crew to plow, and we, the toilets inevitably overflow if you've got more than 10 people. So I guess what I'm asking the board to, is to consider what we should do about this, if we should amend our policy to not rent during, during this. Don't snow. run it. Right. As, just don't rent it at all. But this, oh, is yeah. when, this is when the community wants it. For example, we've got how many people really? It's like a few people. It's not like we're overflowing. I, I mean, <laughs> literally. Sorry about the analogy, yeah. but <laughs> it's not like we have somebody wants it like, like thirty times out of the. Month. Well, like Weight Watchers comes once a week, right? Weight Watchers no, no longer come. They're no oh, longer they here. Have, they have found the, the the building intolerable in the winter. Okay. So. That's that. And also, Carol, who's moved across the street, moved, so that's that's the other issue. But we always get at least one or two March birthdays. We get things like this. Uh, there's going to be the Mud Season series where yep. people are going to come in and want to use town hall. Sometimes we have yoga during people. It's weird that the only time this hall gets used is the absolutely worst time that this hall should be used. So I guess that's what I'm asking for is a little bit of guidance. Mm -hmm. I say don't rent it. How, how many times do you rent it? How many times was it rented this past year, not counting... Not counting Weight Watchers? Weight Watchers. I, I don't know, maybe about six times. But again, you know, if there was a, there's a dog therapy class. There were a, there was a lot of... What, last year was kind of weird because there was What's Next Middlesex stuff. There was also the local political parties wanted to get together. Um, you know, stuff like that. But March and February are the times when, you know, non-political, regular people use this building, and they always run into these problems. And the reality is that our building should be have some, I would say, some public space would be nice, mm -hmm. but... 
Yeah. Well, um, but not if it's not. But not if it's not. Yeah. If it's usable, and we're renting it to somebody. So. I mean, we don't charge much, but I don't think we should rent it out if we can't. I mean, we've had the problem with the toilet for as long as I've been on the board. I know. It's all and I mean, I've thought too. about, you know, maybe we should get a toilet that's outside, but nobody's going to go outside when it's cold <laughs> and use a toilet <laughs> anyway. No, and the, I can't figure out the well. Sometimes there's water, sometimes there's not. It ended up the toilet was kind of broken. We fixed it. It's... Well, the toilet in general is a problem here anyway. Right. Yeah. It's just yeah, not a but, traditional grade toilet. Yeah. It's a type of toilet you have not really found. I would suggest we just don't rent it. I mean, it's not. I agree. Okay. Yeah, especially in the winter. But I mean, if you, if, if in the summer, it's, I know every time people have had a party here, we've had a problem with the toilet. Every single time. I mean, the other thing we could consider too is rather than saying no one can come and use this space, there might be just space limitation, like crowd limitations. Yeah, but the baby shower, how many people were there? 30? Yeah, no. But that might be too many. Like maybe, but you, but we shouldn't say, oh, you can't have a conservation commission meeting well, here where ten people are going to show up. Well, the five or four, five, six times a year that we rent that out, and it's not like right. you're making any money. You're making it available to the public, but for that few times, you'd be better off just not renting it. Well, period. I think it should be kind of either or. The, that's where we get into the problem of you know people could have hurt themselves. Again, I want to say that this these people who rented it were fantastic. When the toilets overflowed, they cleaned them up. They cleaned up the upstairs. They were great. There, I would yeah. never have known that. It wasn't like the other time that the toilets overflowed where I couldn't even open that door because it was. So no. And yeah. I'll say I've rented this town hall three times so and never had an issue with it, but never expected anybody to shovel off the steps no. yeah. or anything like that. And but I think it's a to uh, Liz's point, it is a nice. Yeah, I don't want to just nice say no. We don't have residents. this available. Well, I think it's I a think, really nice idea, but, I, think it, it's but I don't think we should be spending a lot of money because we're not going to fix the toilets easily. Well, what about if people? I mean, the other thing is the liability issue. I mean, well, they definitely should have, have a waiver of liability. Why don't we suggest that they rent the um, fire station? <laughs> Because there is yeah. that little public room, which yeah, is like you can't have big. people around that equipment down there. Yeah, I know. And if there's a fire, you can't like yeah. have a party yeah, going. They can't have that. Ping pong table upstairs there. Oh, that's upstairs. Yeah. Better off to go up to the school. Can you rent the school? Can't. No, the school is really the school. hard to get. Yeah. What? No. No more. You gotta no get more. fingerprinted before you go in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's kind of yeah. tough. Yeah. Like, you do. Yeah. Background check. Pretty soon we'll have to get fingerprinted before we go up and vote. <laughs> yeah, that's a tough one, but I just, yeah, if yeah. you start making rules of, yeah. you know, only so many people or this and that, I don't know. But I just don't think we can say we no longer can, I mean, I, I think there has to be caveats. I think this, re, this, um, warrants further discussion of how yeah. we're going to deal with this. Yes. Well, of course, it's going to warrant for further discussion because, you know, Peter wants to weigh in on it. Well, <laughs> so I, just, I just wanted to bring it to your attention. Yeah, no, yeah. that's good. Yeah. I think that for the foreseeable future, though, you should not rent it. Okay, well, I've got people ready. <laughs> I know. I mean, we've got, we've got events happening I mean, here. we've got something upstairs now. Well, it's not too bad. I mean, what, here's a typical example. The local water district that's right here, they're using it next Sunday. They'll be fine. They will probably won't even turn on the the water. Um, right. I mean, when we do a yoga class up there, it's not like we're running down right. to the bathroom. Yeah, it's more like parties. Are, yeah, it's parties. It's big party, things. Parties Kids. Are, pit, parties are, can be a problem. I mean, that, there were games and food and, you know, so people wash their hands in the bathroom. And what's wrong? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Games and food. It just causes us to have to go use the toilet. Yeah, so, <laughs> so that, that's one of the things right there. So you can rent it out to for meetings yeah. type thing, but How not about for priority. For meetings yeah. only. Meetings only. No food or drink allowed. <laughs> no use the bathroom. Go home. Go at home. <laughs> go, outside, have, go outside behind the, the old fire station. And sign a waiver of reliability, although if it's a town meeting. If you overflow the toilet, to you have to clean it up. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. Well, we're primed now to discuss it. Action unlikely. Yes, we are. Well, I think we've got a better. Okay, so it took us about 10 minutes. It will. They will discuss it next time for about 35 minutes. No, no, we shouldn't because we have discussed yeah, we We've already so discussed we know it. where our minds yeah, we are going. <laughs> We've done so search. We are hanging together. Let me just say, we'll have a little monologue from Peter. I've, and it will start with this. I've thought about this a lot. Yeah, we've thought about it for a whole week. 
<laughs> I love Peter, but he's so sincere. Okay, treasurer's report. Well, the report is you guys get paid tonight. Yay! So there you go. Thank hey, you, Teresa. Woohoo! Woohoo! We, we didn't even vote yet. Thank you. I know. No. This might be my last one for all I know. I might not get voted in. So is this, running is, this is no. for this year. So. <laughs> this is for the year ending, not the year beginning. And yeah. then we get a separate uh, a separate a W-2 in the mail, right? We already got it. That, yeah, we, we already got, got, got it a long okay, time yeah. ago. Yes. Okay. Um, well, I always put anything in never tax document. That was I put it right in my file. <laughs> that was what you got last year. Yeah. This is right. Yeah, the, the, the W two you got was got it right. for 2018. You'll get one. So this is a real check. I have to deposit it. Yeah, but you can take a picture of it. I do. I do that. Now. <laughs> I do the mobile deposit. It's fun. That's the greatest thing. I know, isn't it? Yeah. And so I'll try to figure out how you twice. can do that with cash. Yeah. Oh, I know. That'd be cool. Well, I don't but know. I deposited twenty dollars. Right. <laughs> Wait, what happened? <laughs> oh, wait a second. I I don't know. I I don't like to do as much stuff on the internet as you do. I'm afraid somebody's gonna break in and know everything about me. Well, they probably they already, already do. They already do. <laughs> yeah, I know. But there's but, a camera. You just don't want them to have access to your bank accounts. That's all. <laughs> Anything else that you want to tell us? Um, I don't think so. Lame duck session. Yay, this is That's nice. That's what we like. Lame duck session? What do you mean by that? Because it's between the budget. Yeah. the new board to step in. Yeah. As if <laughs> these two guys to go. As if the new board's going to be any different than the old yeah, board. Right. Aren't you both running on a post? I'm running yeah. on a post. Are you running? I'm running. Yeah, just oh. the two of us are. You, you didn't need that, huh? I didn't need that. <laughs> that was thrown in your way. Yeah, All awesome. right. <laughs> if the treasurer's report is done, Oh, we're we're ahead of schedule. We are. Anyone want to move the approval of the February fourth, two thousand twenty minutes? Who hasn't signed these? Sure, I did. Every move. And Mary, did you Maybe sign those? No, I oh, haven't yeah. even looked at it. Phil moves that we approve the the February fourth, two thousand twenty uh, minutes. And is there a second for that? I wasn't here. I'll right? second it. I think no. I was. Yeah, I was here. Yeah, you were. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those those opposed. Those abstaining. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, that. where is the memorandum of understanding for the emergency medical service between Middlesex and Montpelier? I decided not to make a bunch of copies because they just ended in recycling. Is this an annual thing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's yeah. big bucks. It's big bucks. Yeah. This is like a very short agreement for a that's very large like, amount of money. Yeah. That's exactly right. Yeah. Okay, the city shall provide ambulance service to the town for a two-year period, July 1, 20 through 22. The amount of 40 point, uh, per capita, $40.58 for the first year, and then $42 for the second year. And they're using the town service population, which is a, the 2010 U.S. Census, and then they do the multiplier. So we're going to owe bills 35000 and some small dollars on the 15th of 2020. December 15th, 35, and then 36 and 36. And if the city jo explores joining a regional ambulance service during the period of this agreement or shortly thereafter, the city shall negotiate in concert with the town so as to maximize the interests of both the city and the town. This is not only for this town. Don't they provide this for a bunch of the other towns, too? I don't know. It's just something that we always sign every year so that we can... I know, but I mean, like, are yeah, they... Probably. There are yeah. other towns, too. We're not the only one. All right. Does uh, anyone uh, want to move for I approval? I will move. Okay. Steve moves. Anyone want to second that? I'll second uh, you should probably authorize, you should have a motion to authorize you to sign that. And that motion includes the provision that the vice chair is authorized to sign it uh, as the chair. Um, I'll just put vice chair. Okay. Um, I guess that's it. Yeah, I and I what I said. Yeah. Yeah. To authorize me to sign as the vice yeah. chair on behalf of the board. Okay, that's the motion. Have you heard the motion? Any Please, so I will amend that motion to read that. Great. Then I'll second that amendment. 
I second approve. that. You, you accept that amendment. Yeah, I accept that amendment. Yes. You, you second I, that motion. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 And those opposed say no. Any abstentions, Steve? <laughs> Shall I sign vice chair approved by the board or just leave it with my signature? I don't know. So a bunch of different towns pay them for the service. Can yeah. I look and at that they way? also file with health insurance. What do you say that again? Well, I'm just I'm saying, you know, so they have contracts with a number of different towns to provide ambulance services. Yep. But don't they also file with health insurance? to get paid for ambulance services. Oh, you mean They're putting billed. insurance claims? Yeah. Well, they bill a... Mm -hmm. They bill, like if they go out, they bill... Um, that person? If that person. That person, oh, yeah. yeah. They bill the person, and the person, then they submit, the person submits it to their health yeah. insurance. This is like, but just like an insurance that's coverage. That's just is basically to make sure just to make sure they'll respond to your town. Yeah, um, this isn't, you know, like yeah. based on number of runs or anything gotcha. like that. Hmm. Just curious, like, so in our budget, it's on, it's like seventy thousand something. So yeah, I remember they it gave, being that high. They gave me the number. I was gonna look. Um, it's gone up but a lot. It was yeah. something that was supplied to us from the fire department. I don't know. I didn't compare to oh. see if the number was exactly what they gave us, but. Supposedly, they had called and gotten it from mm -hmm. them, but that was a number they provided to us. The number you mean the U.S. Census? No, the the dollar, the dollar amount, amount was given to us by the fire department. Forty dollars and fifty-eight cents. No, no, the, it was the total. Oh, the total. The total amount. Wonder what our twenty twenty census is going to be for? Well, they do the American. Um, survey every five years. But we've had an increase in our population, haven't we, Sarah? I don't know. Small. I, mean, I doubt if it's much. I don't think yeah. it's much. Forty dollars a person is pretty reasonable. Oh, for yeah. this? Pr yeah. Yeah. No, reasonable. but I mean yeah. like the yeah, number of people in the town has well, increased. Was... Oh, I don't know what yeah. that is, but. Probably small. Yeah. Probably. Any correspondence? Uh, no. Hmm. No one's writing us. Orders have been signed. Orders have been signed. You guys signed. want to talk about the meeting on uh, the proposed meeting, of holding a select board meeting a half an hour before town meeting, just so you guys can uh, at Romney School, just so you guys can sign orders. Sure. Sure. That's a good answer. <laughs> Perfect. That, did we just talk about it and we're done now? I yeah. think I okay. yeah, that one. Can I share my um, Can I share my experience with the fire department? Yes. Yes. How are the outfits? Did they feel good? It was really heavy, so what I did was I met them um, at the fire department, and it was Jeff Coons was in charge. Um, the chief wasn't there. I always forget his name. Doug. Doug, Doug, Doug. right. Doug wasn't there. <clears throat> and so um, there's a, a couple of, um, there's a new young guy named Eric. Um, he's been on for a couple of years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's been on for a couple of years, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. Relatively yeah. new, I should relatively say. Relatively new, right. yeah. nice And um, so he was kind of my partner. Um, and everyone was really professional. And, um, and uh, you know, I think uh, Jeff had really good command of everyone. So what we did was we met with Moortown Fire Department, and we did a joint training with Moortown Fire Department. And, um, and so we went to a house just down the road, um, in the fire truck, and I was all did suited up ride, in Katie's. Did, did you get to ride in the front? Yep, I was suited up in Katie's um, uh, outfit, Katie Coons's outfit. And then when we got there, we um, basically uh, trained by going in in teams of like two, and there were other people in the building into a smoke-filled building um, with fake smoke. And so I was wearing the really heavy um, breathing gear that they're looking to replace. So they're looking to replace these oxygen tanks and the whole sort of system. Um, and it was terrifying and exhilarating. And like, I mean, I 
you know, definitely had a renewed appreciation for what a firefighter has to do in terms of going into a smoke-filled building to look for bodies, because that's what we were doing. We were searching for a body that was somewhere in the house. I couldn't see anything. I couldn't, like, you know, I had my bearings were completely <coughs> off, and this was a house with no furniture in it. So imagine like a house with furniture in it, right? Wow. So we had to climb up the stairs and then we had to crawl around on the floor and like find rooms and find doors and things like that. <laughs> All the while making sure that I wasn't panicking because you get claustrophobic because there's you don't see anything around you. You've got this breathing apparatus on. Um, and so, I mean, I thought it was good. And then when we got back, um, so, you know, we did that with the, and they, and the Moortown guys were, um, they were in command of the training and they did an excellent job, um, with just the command of the whole group. Everyone was, you know, really, um, a fluid group, I think. And then, um. How many people were there? Oh, there were a lot. There were, um, on the Moortown side, there were at least like eight guys, and, and on our end, um, maybe six or something like that. There was, you know, um, a decent number. Not, I don't, I don't know if everyone was there because I'm not entirely sure who's on the fire department. Um, so the ketchup ball boys, I know they're on that. Uh, there's a man and his kids. Um, he's been on it for a long time. Um, maybe those. His are sons kids. are probably like. So in high school, even. Okay. Oh, I don't know. Like teenagers. Um, but there are, no, no the one lives in Middlesex no, except for this guy, Eric. Eric and Jeff. So sex. Eric and Jeff both. And Eric is, um, he was really professional and helpful. And, um, you know, I felt very safe with him. Um, so anyway, it was, um, you know, it is definitely older equipment. Now, I mean, I was able to breathe. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you and yeah. and uh, and so you know, I I don't um, you know I can't speak for the equipment being um, uh, not in good enough shape to for 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 our fire department for our firefighters to to use it. Like, is there um, is there a reason that they have to be replaced? Um, if it is that there is a danger, I mean, certainly we. We want to be very mindful of that, um, and because they're definitely putting their lives on the line every time they go into a burning house. Do they go um, into a burning house when they're part of a mutual aid? Um, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I think they do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if yeah, there's sure. yeah, sure. Or if they're you know there's a house in Middlesex, and you know smoke is the biggest sort of killer, mm -hmm. and um, and you know one of the things too was that you know they were saying the the experience that I had had no heat with it. But a burning house has mm -hmm. heat, and so you know um, that you. So you have to stay low. You have to crawl on the ground because the the heat rises. Um, and so you know when you're dealing with with those really tense situations, and you're breathing and you're panicking a little bit, you might have intense heat all around you too. You know yeah. that you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. um, so I w I appreciated the invite. I I learned a lot from it. I don't want to be a volunteer firefighter because it was pretty scary. Um, and but the other thing that was nice about this training was that this was designed to train these volunteers to go in and know that they might not be good at that. And if they if they are claustrophobic or they do panic, they might not be the ones that we send in to. Um, so being in those circumstances of a safe place to try it out, um, I can tell you I was terrified. Freaked. Yes. Yeah, I was, I was like, and there was no snow, and there was no real smoke. It sounds no. like the way I felt when I started doing uh, scuba diving, and I said, "Yeah, get oh. me out of here." <laughs> yeah, no. So, That's I mean, cool, though. yeah, it is it's cool, and I, and and the reality is that if we do need to replace these, I still think we need to figure out like, is it something like they borrow the money for it? I don't know how that would end up, you know, working out. Do you set money aside every year for it? Um, how much did they say it was? I think it's it fifty thousand. Yeah. It's a lot. Well, it it runs a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Fifty thousand for how many sets? Uh, I think eight. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's expensive equipment. Yep. Yeah. Um, you know, and or can it be done sort of piecemeal, like you do like two at a time, so that you're not, you know, or do you just do it all at once? You probably do. I think he said that you do it all at once just because of the interchanging. Yeah. Of I think that's what and, they said when they were yeah. here. Yeah. So we'd be better off to just do it yeah. all at once and take a multi-year 
Probably. For it. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, but I mean, the reality is that fire departments are expensive. Yeah. You know, I mean, they're really expensive to maintain, and I do think that this is even more reason for us to think about: Are there ways to do this more cost effectively? Either like, you know, why aren't more towns partnering together with fire departments? Why does each town have its own fire department? <laughs> Um, I mean, I, I know think it because it started of, in the old days just because right. it wasn't that sophisticated. You'd right. have like one truck and one tanker. Yeah. And I mean, the reality fire. is their job is to save lives. It's not to save houses, really, because that's just not yeah. possible in rural areas to really save right. houses. Um, so, I don't know. Anyway. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. the update. Well, I'm glad to hear they're yeah. Yeah. No, I felt good. Yeah, I, yeah, and I and I felt good about how um, everyone um, respected Jeff and um, you know they they really had it all down what they were supposed to do when they got back and and all of that. So Are the other guys good. friendly to you? Oh, everybody was really friendly. You just can't remember who they were. Well, I don't know. I don't. I'm not good at remembering names. The Moortown guys were really friendly. I think they thought it was a novelty having the select board person come out and put on a... That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. How much did the stuff weigh? A lot. Um, Like, probably... 50 pounds and I didn't have half the stuff on me 50 pounds like because you, you I, there's all this other stuff the tanks were really heavy the clothes themselves the 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 thing maybe not quite 50 but it was a good wow. I mean I had trouble like well, moving I was like <laughs> you were like I have to get down and crawl good because right. I can't stand exactly. up <laughs> yeah it was it was a lot yeah it was sore on my back after carrying it for a while too. So. I wonder if the new stuff too is lighter. I think it is. Kind of I think it's more comfortable and, more and comfortable. it's lighter. Um, yeah. I think it's easier to get on. Like I couldn't get it even on myself. Yeah. Like I needed all that help, like swinging it around because it was so well, heavy. Wow! So if you got a fire, it's going to take you like twenty minutes. Oh, I don't know how they do on. it. Yeah, I mean, well, no, they're they. That's what they train doing, you know. But um, yeah. So anyway. Sure. Okay. Well, we still well, have, we have the board of civil authority meeting. I know who's the chair of the civil board. I think I think I you am. are. Who is it? Well, remember the last time I got you during the select board. Meeting? Okay. Yeah, so, seen. is there any other business to come before the board? No. No. So that meeting is on the third. Is at four o'clock then? Correct. Yes, the select board meeting. Is there an agenda? You lost your agenda. Would you like no for the board of civil authority? Oh. I have a, I have a whole bunch of over there as soon as Mary's done. I'll I, I, I. I there okay i hereby adjourn the uh, meeting yep. at six o'clock five fifty nine it says over here six, six o'clock, o'clock over here. on here yay hey five fifty eight